Join me every month for the inspiration to find your finish line. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Find Your Finish Line. The podcast is not only about you being able to find your finish line at a race or an event, but also in life. We have to find our finish lines every day, every week, every month to keep moving forward. And I'll talk to people who have jumped over a lot of hurdles in their life to get to where they are today. You know, when you fall down, you get up. And it makes you a better person. And hopefully the people I have on will help inspire you to do that. And my guest today is someone I respect immensely, is a dear friend. And she is, I, you know, it's almost beyond words what's going on with her life right now. And she'll even say that. She's a three-time Xterra world champion, actor, screenwriter, executive producer, author. Leslie Patterson, how are you? I am wonderful, Mike. It's so lovely to see you. Well, you know, I, I was thinking just when I was introducing you, when was that WTF moment when all of a sudden, you know, the, all quiet on the Western Front gets picked up, you, you win a BAFTA, you're up for an Oscar, like what the, you know what? Can you believe it? Yeah, I tell you what, man, I've had a lot of those moments over this last little bit probably the last few months. Um, I think the first one was when we won a big award for Adapted Screenplay, and it's called um, uh, the NBR Award, uh, National Board of Review. And you've already won the award before you get there. And I was the one that had to make the speech. And mm. in the front row, as I get on the stage, in the front row is Steven Spielberg. <laughs> and this is what... And so I'm having to do this speech, and there's old Speely Boy in front of me. I'm like, what? So well, needless to say, it's just it's been one crazy thing after next. Um, so yeah, it's it's just it feels like I'm having these these moments all the time, all the time. And um, I met Tom Cruise a couple of weeks ago. That was pretty wild. Um, that's, that's wild. That was wild, dude. And he actually knew my story. That was the craziest thing. And he asked me, how many hours a day do I train? And because uh, he still trains, you know, two or three hours a day, even when he's on set. So he's definitely a kindred spirit, that's for sure. Oh, I love that, Leslie. Well, All Quiet on the Western Front. It's a movie that, and we'll go into it because it, it's, it's, it's funny. It's an easy movie to watch, but it's not an easy movie to watch. And the lessons that it should teach us are far, uh, they, they, they should last for the rest of our lifetimes and beyond. But when, when I was in your condo in San Diego with you and Simon, and you, <laughs> you were actually interviewing me for the Xterra podcast, that's when you, you asked me, do you know anything about All Quiet on the Western Front? I go, yeah, I read the book. I, I'm a, I love World War I, World War II history, and I read a lot of that. And I said, I read the book years ago. She goes, I, I, you go, I wrote a screenplay for that. Well, well, how can you do that? It's already done. And, and when you told me that, I, I was thinking, well, okay, that's great. But it's been the longest race of your life, hasn't it? 16 year journey oh, yeah. when you started doing that till, till seeing it on the big screen. Totally, man. I tell you. Sure beats Iron Man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's been a lot of uh, a lot of swimming miles, biking miles, and running miles gone into that 16 years. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah. So when you option a title like this, you have to renew it every year and pay quite a lot of money and convince people to, um, mm -hmm. you know, that yes, you can indeed do it. So. Across that amount of time, of course, it, it you know Simon and I put in about two hundred thousand dollars across those years, uh, mm. and a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of convincing. Um, so it was it was a tough journey, filled with many obstacles. Leslie, what what was the mindset of you and Simon? We were talking about Simon Marshall, Leslie's husband. Uh, that's a great deal of money. I know you have confidence in yourself and your ability, but over that long of a period of time, 
I'm thinking to myself, I don't know if I could have stuck with it. What, what was that that had you stick with this project for so long and spending so much money on it? You know, I think it's ultimately your why. Like, why are you doing it? It's been the same in sport and it's the same in film. And the why behind this was it's a story that needs to be told. We believed that we had the in, that we had a different way of telling the story that was unique. And, um, yeah, I think when you're driven by that amount of passion to tell a story that matters, then you just keep going. And then the other side to it is, is you rationalize it. So like anything, the film business is a business. So just like you would invest in a business, we were investing this money in ourselves because we knew that if it paid off, it would pay off big, which of course it has. But even if it hadn't, all along the way, the meetings that we were able to take because of this title, the journey, the people that we met, the things that we did, it was a huge learning experience. It was almost like a school right? So what would you spend on your own education? So I think you just find a way to sort of pivot what it means, what that investment means, why you're doing it. And that keeps you kind of on the straight and narrow. And then Netflix picks it up. It's, I remember you telling me this and, and even into the point of where the filming was going to start in the Czech Republic and, and, you couldn't go or Simon couldn't go because it was during the, the pandemic, COVID. the COVID. Yeah. But uh, what do you think, what do you think all of a sudden after that many years, Netflix, did they see the same thing? Was it your, you know, quote, for lack of a better word, sales ability to be able to keep trying to convince them? Or was there somebody there who said, yeah, you're right. The story needs to be told. It was all of the above. Um, ultimately, a film like this needs a visionary behind it and that was our director Ed Berger and he came to the table with a lot of kudos behind him he's a very well regarded German director this is a German novel and him and his producing partner partner Walter Gruner they said to us we want to do this in German speaking language what do you think and we said absolutely because in this day and age 16 years ago we could not have done this film as a foreign language film and raise the money to do it. It was a very different landscape that now, of course, with, you know, uh, stories coming out of different cultures, people are fascinated by that. The bankability of those kind of stories, the streamers supporting local language content, all of that had changed, right? So when Ed came to the table with his vision of how he wanted to do this project, and with our script and our take, and with a, an amazing producer as well, you know, the package was there. It's all about the package. And Netflix absolutely just jumped on it. And they were so excited about it. And it, it also takes kind of a visionary and a champion within those bigger entities as well. And we had a, a, an amazing champion of the project called Sasha Bueller at uh, Netflix Europe. So, and she was behind it all the way. So there's many pieces of the pie. It's never just a, hey, why don't you? And, oh, yeah, that sounds good. Like anything, it's a business, you know. You, they they put together all the pieces. They run kind of their own metrics. Mm -hmm. um, and they say, yes, this is a good bet. And and that's what makes them do it or not do it. But as a as a screenwriter, you know, your words are on paper they're there for a reason and why you thought of them, why you put them together, why you rewrote them so many times. But then comes the art of making the film, of choosing the cast, choosing the location, choosing the length of the film, the editing. Did you have uh, much to do with that part of the process? Was that Were you a part of that collaboration? They definitely involved us in it. But at the end of the day, what you realize as a writer... Um, and as, uh, we're, you know, we're executive producers on this project mm -hmm. as well, you have to trust your director and their vision, and you have to let them fly. They have to take control of it. And that's why, you know, Ed also did a draft of the script. He has the writing credit. Because what he infused the script with was that German sensibility, that there was no way we could have done that ourselves. We're not German. 
So why this story appeals to so many is it has that outside-in perspective uh, that we brought to the table, then the inside-out perspective of authenticity and so on that Ed has brought. So, you know, filmmaking is a collaboration. You have to push your ego out the side and you have to be in service of the project. And that, that is a somewhat easy thing to do when you're working with such good people. When I watched it, I found myself, I, I had never, ever felt this way before on any movie I watched when it came to, and you know, they had us against them. You know, you're on one side, they're on the other, and the ones that are on the other are your enemy. But during the movie, I started... I started feeling for both sides, you know, obviously. Yeah. And, and, and then when it came to the, one of the scene, the final scene, you know, one of the final scenes with the one-on-one in the mud of, of the, the two, our, your lead actor and, and uh, the German fighting a mano a mano, I'm thinking this is a kid like our kid. Right. I, I, it, it's, I, it was almost like a bit of a revelation. I go, are you, are you kidding me? I've, I've never been on the other side thinking, oh no. my God, they, they have a family too. Is that right. what you wanted to have happen? Right. And that's exactly the point of the movie. It's a story about the everyman, you know, and mm. that, you know, all of these young men went off to war with their own patriotic fervor. And they all had to go through this, you know, in different ways. And of course, coming from the losing side, there's no honor. There's yeah. only shame. So, you know, what does that mean? It leaves you with a decimated country that has nothing to live for. Um, you know, and, and that was fascinating and all the research that we did to really understand the context of how World War One led to World War Two. I'd never been told that. Of course I hadn't, because we were always told it from the perspective of the winners. Mm -hmm. So, you know, just to, again, raise that discourse is a really important thing to do because, unfortunately, in today's day and age, we're siloed in our own little perspectives and we're not exposed to people that are different than us. And as a consequence, we really believe our own, our own sentiments without ever being challenged. So <clears throat> that's why this, this film is so powerful. It it is very powerful, and it, I was thinking about uh, when I was writing some of the questions. When you won your first Xterra World Championship in two thousand and eleven, you you had this 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 was part of your life. This screenplay and was written a part of two thousand and eleven. You must have thought, you know, pretty soon it's great. I, I won a World Championship. Now I can get uh, all quiet, all quiet, sold, and somebody to make a movie about it. It just, it just blows me away how long that journey was. I know. Tell me about it. And yeah, we really <laughs> did believe. We really did believe it then. Oh, it's going to happen. It's going to happen next year. Yeah. And yeah. you just see, and you, and you just, but, but think about how we are as athletes. You have that shitty race and you think, I'm never doing this again. What do you do yeah. the next morning? You sign up for your next earner. You know? So it's, it's amazing how we're driven by, we forget that sort of quote unquote, sort of failure or that knockback and you think okay what's up next let's give that a go you know you, you you started out as a young rugby player in scotland uh with the the only girl of uh, what three four hundred boys running around and uh that, and then you go to the triathlon it's like you combine rugby and triathlon and you get what Xterra. That, it, it's, <laughs> exactly. It, it's like, uh, I mean, you, you you were bred bred for this. And that journey had to set a foundation for you today, didn't it? Oh, for sure. And we call it, Simon and I call it resilience training. Resilience because training. Because that's what it was. And we don't have enough of that nowadays. And it really makes you strong and uh, durable to cope with anything that comes your path. And, you know, I was brought up in a typical Scottish household. There was four of us. I was the youngest. You had to fight for your dinner, you know, but there was a lot of support and love. Um, so, you know, I just kind of got out there. I was taught to get out there and give it a go and stop moaning, get on with it. So and no that, doubt that's helping. Yeah, yeah, really. 
Hold on, everyone. We'll be right back after a message from our sponsors. I just finished up a run and Activite's the official topical pain relief partner of Ironman keeps me going. Don't let strain and pain keep you from your training, keep you from finding your finish line. Activite comes in three different applications, roll on, spray and gel. Check out all the products on amazon.com, at Walmart and ironman.com and have Activite help you find your finish line. You know, you moved to California, and uh, it 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 changed you, didn't it? Probably in it ways did. you didn't think it was going to. It's true because you know the California mindset is very much a can-do, American dream. You know, the sky's the limit, that kind of attitude, and that was very helpful for me because growing up uh, in Scotland, of course, it, it can be a little bit more negative sometimes. I'm. Um, mm. You know, it can be a bit a bit more sort of down on yourself and don't even bother trying. If you're going to fail, forget and it. You know, that whole mindset. So, um, yeah, I think it was, it was very liberating. It was also liberating for me because I'd been a very strong athlete as a junior and then sort of a failure. You know, I really bonked out of the sport. I lost my passion for it. And so coming to America allowed me to just shed that skin and reinvent myself. Um, and that's exactly what I did. You know, I went and studied my master's in theater mm-hmm. and film at San Diego State and just kind of find out who I was. Because when you're when you're in your early 20s, you don't know who you are. And so you're doing a lot of things because of the expectation of others. So just to kind of find my way and that finding my way actually brought me back to the sport but in a way that I truly loved and worked for me. And that was the important thing. You know, the, the push and pull of being successful in one part of your life and not in another. Here you get your master's degree, but your racing was kind of taking a hit because obviously you were trying to do well in that. And then you come back and race, what, the Scottish National Championships and you and you win that. And Was that kind of a turning point? Like, oh my gosh, I can get back into this game strong? Yeah, you know, I think it was, it was almost less about the win and more about how much I enjoyed it. Mm. that was shocking to me you know it's always been about the love of it right and so if ever that goes I have to take a a, a step back I've never really been focused on the, the results in a way the outcome it's always been on the process so the process I really enjoyed it and I didn't expect to enjoy it and I thought you know what I'm just going to do a bit more of this (laughs) <laughs> I'd miss the, you know, I'd miss the community, I'd miss the people, all of that. Well, it, uh, then you, you contracted Lyme disease, which, you know, it made it tough. 2014, you didn't race a lot. And I, you know, I know, I know a few friends with it. The tough part about Lyme disease, and you, you can confirm this for me, Leslie, is, yeah, it's tough when you get it, but it seems to linger on and, Injuries and health after that for years uh, is kind of a tough battle. The adversity of it either makes you strong or knocks you down. Yep, and that, I think it did a bit of both, really. Initially, it knocked me down. I mean, I was in a bad way. Oh. You know, I'd been at the top of my game in sports, you know, really achieving things I never thought was possible. And then all of a sudden, I was bedridden and, and in a lot of pain. And um, yeah, it was very humbling. And maybe that's why, you know, again, I've had more success is that I'm doing it for the right reasons. And every step of the way, I'm, I'm grateful for it. You know, when the things that are important to me now were different than then. You know, Leslie Patterson should write a Leslie Patterson screenplay. <laughs> I was just thinking about that. Holy crap. That Now there's a movie we'd want to watch. There's a doc. <laughs> be, yeah. They go, how can this girl keep picking her ass up off the ground? This is amazing. <laughs> oh, God, I don't know. I tell yeah. you. 
<laughs> and then you, you know, I gotta, I gotta crank him a little bit. You gotta live with Simon, for God's sakes. When we Come were doing the, one. when we were doing the podcast, I'm thinking, okay, there's this, you know, PhD clinical psychologist, and I'm thinking, what's he thinking that I'm thinking I'm about to say? <laughs> you know, because every time you talk to him, <laughs> I, I always think about that. But he, uh, um, he's a great guy. He's he, a genius. He's a gem. I wouldn't be here without him. He's an amazing writer. <laughs> he's know. an amazing guy. And he's just, you know, and, and that's and that's the thing, isn't it? You know, you, you are the person you are because of the people around you, mm. uh, your family, your friends, your partner. Um, and I'm lucky enough to have had great friends and family around me. So, you know, um, and, and great parents, you know, a source of great parents. I mean, yeah. how lucky am I? There's not a lot of people that have it, I'm afraid to say. And all you triathletes out there, yeah, Leslie and Simon asked me to go for a ride. They live near where my daughter lives. They used to live next door to my daughter. And so we ride up to a place called Point Loma, which is a little climb, but it's nothing. We're having conversation. Then we drop down to the tide pools, which is, what is that, 1,200 feet, 13? Yeah, yeah. I'm afraid to say it's not even as much as a... Uh, Yeah, well, so we go down to the bottom and we climb back up and I'm kind of hanging on. I go, this is cool. Then I figure we're just going to ride back to my daughter's house. And you turn around and go down. I go, Simon, what's she doing? Oh, we're doing repeats. We're doing five times. What? You're telling me now? (laughs) So we go down and up, down and up, down and up. Oh, my gosh. Come on. You you love me afterwards. uh, Come on. I I did love you because because now, you know, I'll go to my daughter's, have the play with the kids, the grandkids, have the bike on top of the car, and I'll go up, and I'll go up and down a few times, and I think about you every time. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. Kicking my butt oh, up. <laughs> it's, it's amazing, though, what you're capable of, isn't it? What one is capable uh, of that you, you couldn't imagine. So, Leslie, you shared with me, too, one of the other screenplays you had written that I read that I dearly loved. Can I say the name of it? or Your Canon's Ease. The, the Travelers, right? That's right, fighting charity. One of my, one of our favorites. We're so passionate about that film. Oh, I just and you know being of Irish blood and going over there again this summer and I, I just do you think now with all of this with the BAFTA award, the Academy Awards coming up, people are now going to go. Oh yeah, this is a Leslie Patterson deal. I got to read it. I hope so. I, I mean, I really think we're definitely getting access more than ever before. Um, you know, this kind of film is sometimes a bit of a challenge to get off the grind, which is somewhat ironic when you look at uh, Offer Best Pictures, Banshees of Inner Sheeran. But uh, <clears throat> this is, it's a beautiful film set in a weird and wonderful world of the travellers. It's set current day. And, and thematically, it, you know, it really yeah, transcends yeah. that world, right? It's a father-daughter story of unconditional love. Um. But it's amazing. We often get the feedback. It's too regional. You know, it's too much of a small story. And I'm thinking, what? <laughs> but, you know, here's the deal with Hollywood. I'll put that in quotations because I don't even know what that really means. But people want an easy tick in the box. Mm. So they just do. So you you have to fight for projects like this. So let's just say if there's any Irish people out there or people who want to invest in film, please contact Mike. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and uh, we'll let you be on set. Even there, you go. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, you know, every 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 film is a bit of a struggle and a bit of a fight. You just have to find the right people in the right way to get it off the ground. But that one for sure will get made. I know it will. Yeah, I I uh, I'm sure sure of that. And then you know, speaking to the uh, talking about the British, the BAFTAs, the winning the uh, adaptive screenplay there. And the British press, some of the stuff I've seen, I go, oh, my gosh. And I was thinking, oh, now you know who she is? <laughs> All the world championships and everything. Isn't that kind of ironic? And, it is. It, 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 all the things you've done in sport and, you know, you've got the one project and it comes along and it does well. And they go, oh, oh yeah, let tell us your story. Where are you been? I know. <laughs> I know. Do you know what it is? Is I think just the exposure of something like the BAFTAs and the Olympics is so. I mean, the Olympics, the BAFTAs and the uh, Oscars. I mean, it's such a, a big platform, mm-hmm. um, and they love a good story. They love a good story. The Brit, the British press. So it's it's been amazing to be honest, and it's it's it really has helped us, and it's helped Netflix, it's helped the film, it's helped get more eyeballs on it. So 
I mean, I'm really pleased with how it's all gone and, you know, Simon and I want to go back to the UK a bunch and that's really nice to feel like yep. I have that kind of support. So, I mean, I'm not complaining. Bring it on. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, no kidding. And Leslie, the thing, one of the things I admire about you the most is your give back to our sport, uh, swim, bike, and run. With Braveheart coaching, you know, you invite people to come to your uh, camps when you did them here in San Diego, and you just, just did another one recently too, didn't you? We did. And, and Leslie doesn't charge a fee to come to the camp. And you, uh, you've given me the pleasure of speaking at it a couple of times, and I I just think that is one of the best things anybody can do. And But giving back is, is what it's about, isn't it? It's huge, honestly, because I know what the sport has done for me, mm-hmm. and I want to do that for other people. It's so empowering how you challenge yourself, what you overcome, what you learn about yourself. I'm very passionate about getting kids into the sport, especially young girls, um, you know, we've we've done a camp in the past for kind of underprivileged kids and gotten the support uh, of all my sponsors. Have done lots of things like that. So I'm hoping that this platform will help me do a bit more of that. That would be really nice. Um, yeah, because it's an amazing. I mean, we all know that it's an amazing sport. It's an amazing community. We want more. We want more diversity. We want you know younger people in the sport. We want greater access to it. Um, and all that's coming. It's coming. Yeah, it is. So the huge question I have is, are you going to wear running shoes underneath your <laughs> your gown on the red carpet? Do you know and what? I'm sure, to- I'm sure I- I you've swear. got a designer and everything, but... I, I-, I do. Can you get away with it? Can you get away? <laughs> do you know what? I did think about it because, you know, wearing heels is pretty tough, but I think I might just have to suck it up because heels and a dress just look <laughs> yeah. so much better. And it's all about how you look. It's all about how you look. Come on now. Oh, yeah. Right. That's why I get red carpet background. And I just cannot wait to, to watch. March 12th, the Academy Awards. Uh, right. and, get, and keep, get Team Z out there watching. That's it. I want videos and pictures of everyone watching. <laughs> okay. You got it. You got it. So my last question on tri-table racing uh, on the athletic side, but you know, I was just thinking about this, where, where it comes from is I've got friends that race the Baja 1000 <laughs> and you know, it's 24 hour endurance driving through the Baja, but afterwards they get together and they have a thing called table racing where they sit around the table and rem- reminisce about the event, what went wrong, what went right, the good, the bad. So I call it tri table racing where you sit around and Give us an antidote or reminisce about an event or with you reminisce about something that's happened in your journey of, of making, helping make All Quiet, writing All Quiet on the Western Front. So just do a little tri-table yeah. racing with us. I'll do, I'll do my favorite one that's kind of making the rounds in social media right now. But it basically, you know, every year we would have to re-up this auction or it was a loss of money and we always struggled with where to find it. And uh, there was a particular race that year called Suica. I went out there uh, in the hopes of winning it. So I was very fit. And I looked at the starting line and I thought, you know what, I've got a good chance of winning this. And that will cover a cost for the auction. Happy days. So I go out to the race, spend all my money doing that. And um, the day before the race, I'm pre-riding the course. I fall off my bike and I break my shoulder. So I'm a mess. It's a traverse day. I'm crying the whole bit. Luckily, Simon, being the sports psychologist that he is, he says to me, okay, Patterson, let's see what we can do. I get on the bike, I prop up my left arms. I cannot move it at all. So I just prop it up. I hold on my right arm. I walk down the descents, and I'm like, okay, I can get through the bike. I can even get through the run. The swim? No way. So he's like, well, Wesley, you really could do the one arm drill. Why don't you just swim one arm? And I'm like, you know, nobody tells you you can. Let's just give this a whirl. So I swam the one mile with one arm, and I was exhausted, of course, but I came out 12 minutes down. Uh, I biked and had to walk all the descents, but I biked through to second, and then I ran through and won the race with a broken shoulder. And in the end, we got enough money to cover the auction. So it's a bit of a sport slash film story, but it's becoming a bit of a bit of a legacy. So... Uh, it just goes to show you what you can do if you really want something. And I'll bet you Tom Cruise knows that story too. That's right. He probably does. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to check on that at the Oscars. I'll go, "Hey, Tommy boy, 
<laughs> tell him, t- tell him, tell him, Mike Riley will come out of retirement to call him an Iron Man. See if he'll That's right, mate. <laughs> I see if we can get him to do an Iron Man now. That would be cool. Yeah, there was talk years back. I remember when he was uh, going to dip his toes in triathlon with Malibu, the Malibu Tri, where a lot of them do it up there. So uh, I, I think he'd be he'd be great. I mean, the way he trains, for goodness' sake. Oh sakes. God, I'll try and get him. And here we go. Yeah, I'll try. <laughs> Leslie, real quick advice to all those age groupers out there and everybody kind of struggling once in a while and, and and the adversity that comes their way. Uh, but it teaches them lessons, doesn't it? What advice do you have for them? Find your why. Really know your why. Why do you do this? What drives you? Write it down. Get to the essence of it because that's going to get you through the tough days. For me, it was the mastery of the craft that we do, the swim, the bike, the run. I loved every piece of it, being the best I could be in the moment. Um, so drill down on that why, and any time you're having a hard day, come back to it. Exactly. Good for you. Well, Leslie, so damn proud of you and your um, accomplishments. And uh, you need anything from me, you know you got it, just ask. Uh, I, I can't wait to watch. The, vo- the voting's happening soon on the Oscars, so I hope they vote correctly because all quiet on the western front is a uh, teaching lesson that we need to teach for a long time coming leslie patterson thank you very much for being on find your finish line mikey boy thank you so much see you later that's why i love you so much you call me mikey boy all the time only my sisters okay, so do that <laughs> so <laughs> yay all right th- see, you. <laughs> see you and thank you everybody for tuning in to another edition of Find Your Finish Line. Remember, you're the cause of your own experiences. You keep those experiences positive and they'll get you to your next finish line. Aloha, everyone.